Hello and welcome back to Ross Taylor Woodworks. Uh, this time we've got a uh, set of mid-century chairs to restore. Uh, these have a uh, metal frame, uh, maple seat, and an unusual uh, spindle style back. Okay, I looked on the bottom, I don't see any kind of name. And uh, some of these clips are broken off. Are they going to have to be re-welded? And the leg has worn through some of the rubber feet. So these rubber feet will have to be replaced. On a couple of the chairs, the top rung is missing. This is just a 3 8 inch dowel. And on this chair, there's some dog damage. Uh, it's been chewed off here in the end and split off here a little bit. Someone had previously refinished these. Uh, looks like a polyurethane finish was put on here. Okay, this back is installed with four screws. It has a groove routed into it to fit over the metal frame. And the same thing on the bottom, four screws holding the seat. And once again, some of these clips are broken. Now I'm going to pull these uh, backrests apart. It should all be the same length. They're all the same length, so it doesn't matter if they get mixed up. Now I'm getting ready to strip the seats, uh, first scuffing up the finish to allow the uh, paste stripper to penetrate, and using the citrus-based stripper. Now I'm getting ready to strip the backrest parts uh, making a little trough for the cardboard box, lining it with some plastic. And I'm going to put all the parts in the box. These are just finished with a lacquer finish. These don't have the polyurethane on them. Then I'm going to fill up the box with some lacquer thinner. And let them soak for an hour or two. Now I'm pulling them out of the box. I'm going to pour off the lacquer thinner into a pan and to give them a final scrub. Now I'm going to scrape off the seats. Um, you can see the polyurethane comes off in like a sheet. Now following up with lacquer thinner to scrub off the rest of the finish and try to get as much off as possible. Okay, I let those seats dry and as you can see there were a few little patches of finish that didn't come off. And that can easily be taken off with the sander, and I'm using 60 grit paper and the random orbit sander. And going in by hand in the corners to clean up the corners. And on the belt sander, just clean up the front and back edges. Alright, now here's that seat that had the dog damage and the split on the edge. What I decided to do was uh, take the uh, tire edge down. Um, first creating a flat spot on the belt sander. And then I'm going to take it to the jointer 
and joint off about a half an inch. Okay, after taking about a half an inch off, now I'm going to glue a new strip of maple on the edge, leaving a little bit of excess to trim off later. Okay, I first trimmed the ends, and now I'm taking a little bit off the edge. Now I'm going to shape it on the belt sander. I put a, a fresh belt on the belt sander for this. Uh, quite a bit of material to remove. And the edge has a slight taper to it, so I'm putting a taper. And then keep going back and forth and shaping the edge. All right, now I'm getting ready to uh, paint the frames, uh, wiping them down after sanding them. I sanded them down to bare metal. There's quite a bit of rust. Now I'm first treating the metal with a rust converter. Then after letting the converter dry overnight, I'm putting on a coat of primer. In this case, I'm using an automotive primer. Okay, while that primer is drying, I'm gonna finish sanding the seats. And I started off at 60 grit, I went to 100, 120, and up to 150. Okay, the primer is dried, and I'm going to top coat with a satin black paint, putting on about four coats. Okay, now we're into the uh, staining. I uh, finished sanding all the parts to 150 grit, and I was testing some stains, and I wanted to get sort of a teak color. Uh, the original color was sort of a dark walnut. I thought that would be too dark. So I was thinking a um, mid-century teak color would look nice. And I was experimenting with a couple different stains and I decided to go with uh, my old standby of half mahogany and half walnut. The other stain I was testing was English chestnut and I didn't think that was going to work. Okay, here's all the parts after staining and letting them dry overnight. Quite a few parts to stain. Uh, one thing I decided to do while I was staining was after it dried to assemble the backrests before I do any finishing. And the dowels were quite tight, so I had to do some tapping to get them in. Now I'm comparing it with the seat and uh, making sure it's the right width. I went back and forth several times testing the fit. Now I'm going to proceed with uh, two coats of sanding sealer.
Okay, I've let that sanding staler dry and I've done my scuff sanding with 320 and I don't like the appearance of the seats at all. Uh, there's some blotchiness and some uneven color and the uh, edges look terrible. So I think they're going to need a second coat of stain, a uh, glaze coat. Now I'm going to darken up the edges with some shellac and pigments. And now I'm going to do the glaze coat. And in this case, I decided to go back to the uh, English chestnut stain. And I've got it thinned down a little bit with some naphtha. And I'm going to do a glaze coat with the English chestnut. Then after letting the glaze dry a little bit, wipe it down with some paper towels and then dry brush it. I'll let that glaze coat dry a couple of days and now I'm going to seal it in with a dust coat of acrylic. And then two coats of the water-based polyurethane. And on the backrest, I top coated with the Sprite acrylic. All right, I got these uh, chairs done. Uh, pretty simple to put back together. Uh, color came out great. As I said before, I was after sort of a uh, mid-century teak color. And I think it came out pretty good. And uh, as far as uh, putting the backs together, uh, that was a good uh, decision to assemble them before uh, doing the final finish, uh, right after staining. So then I was able to uh, gauge the uh, width and then just uh, screwed them right on without any problems. I was able to get uh, little rubber feet at the hardware store, so re I replaced all the little rubber feet. These uh, tabs welded back on. Uh, if you remember, some of these were broken off. I took that out to a local welding shop, and they did that in a few minutes. Uh, the seats came out great. Uh, if you remember, there was some blotchiness and some uneven color. 